And welcome to The Good Life, everybody. My name is Carl Claiborne. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all so much. It is, again, that time of the evening. The Good Life Show is live, and we are excited to be coming. Tune in tonight. I'm telling you, it is going to be a fantastic show. Go ahead and share with someone. Let them know that you love them by sharing. I'm telling you, do I have a terrific guest. She is well known, but... She has been giving it to me, giving me the business behind the scene, but that's okay. She is my friend and pastor. She is awesome. So I'm glad for her to be here tonight. So guys, come on in. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Javante. Hey man, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. Let us know where you're coming from. We appreciate you always tuning in, being faithful to the show. We could not do it without you. So we really appreciate your presence. This show is brought to you by Envision You Life Coaching, where you can envision the life you want to have. Hey, Patricia, good to see you. Good to see you, friend. You know, um, man, I'm so excited about this show because it is something that, woo, I mean, I realized that I couldn't live without. I realized that the problems I was having because I was struggling trying to do things in my own power. So, Thank God. Hey, how you doing, Minister Paula Neal? Hey, man, she's going to be on the show. Jackie Downing. Hey, how you doing, sis? Yeah, she's going to be coming back. Man, I'm telling you, I got, I am, I tell you, this show has brought me in contact with some dynamic people. Oh, my God. I never would have thought. I realize now why somebody, why a lot of people I knew just kind of left me for dead. And God says, "I okay, I can replace, and I'm going to give you some genuine. So I appreciate the genuine uh, relationships that God has given me. And uh, I'm so excited to be a part of your life as well. So thank God for you. Hey, Pastor Jackie. Oh, that's you, Pastor Sam. I see you up there. I see you. But guys, we got a few more minutes. I just want you to share. Let us know where you're coming from. We appreciate you always tuning in every Sunday at eight o'clock. We're getting ready to, we're at the peak of our season. We're about halfway there. May is our anniversary. So we have a great lineup for you and a great dynamic speaker going to be doing our anniversary. So thank y'all so much. We're going to be celebrating two years, two years. Who would have known when I first started this, I was like, okay, but uh, look what the Lord has done. When God tells you to do something, he will do it. So let us know. We appreciate you guys. Oh, my God. My God. Hey, how you doing there? John, uh, thank you so much. Happy Siblings Day, is it? I hear you. I hear you, man. Happy. It is Happy Siblings Day. Well, Happy Siblings Day to my brothers, wherever you are, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Well, without further ado, it is that time. Uh, we are a couple of minutes past the hour. But I am always thrilled to have this young lady on my show. And uh, she is just one of, I mean, just a dynamic person, but also a great servant of God. Uh, she loves God's people. And she is the true epitome of what leadership uh, responds to. And uh, I love, I just love her because she's funny. You know, she is not one of those, you know, oh my God, you know how those people are, but she is, has a sense of humor and, uh, and she is just a dynamic leader. So I present to some and introduce to others, the one and only Pastor Sam Robinson. Welcome to the good life again. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here, Carl. It's good to be here. With we are so glad to have you uh, back again. I, I'm so excited what your leadership uh, team is doing, just ministering to all facets of life. Uh, can you tell me, why did you start to branch and you're doing so many different things now, how you're just touching people of all walks of life? That is just tremendous. Um, well, actually, so... We are so part of so an organization uh, called SAMC Alliance Corps has sort of branched off from our personal ministry of helps. And um, that's been really huge this over the past two years um, where we're actually able to go into different facets because we're not only trying to be 
um, we want to help and, and reach the whole man, not just part of a man in church, but reach the whole man. So there are other needs that people have, whether it be through their own personal uh, life management, right, through finances or just their uh, businesses or organizational skills and things like that. So trying to uh, reach the whole man has caused us to have to reach beyond the walls of the church, as well as being, you know, just doing through ministry and evangelistic ministry, there's always this call from the kingdom to go beyond the walls. And it, and as you said, sometimes it causes us to go into many different facets. And so what you realize is that you're around people. Uh, so you're, you're team building, you're gathering resources and friends and building networks that cause you to be able to expand your reach. And so that is why we are actually able through fire chosen ministries through uh, unity and empowerment fellowship through uh samc alliance core where we work with so many different people have so many different skills and abilities um, then it's all a blessing not just to the church but even to the corporate world to to the kingdom overall so to be able to touch and impact lives beyond we actually just had a recent uh, partnership we're able to partnership with partner with uh, Mount Air Farm, so we were able to get some of the boxes that they had to be able to feed and uh, share with families. So that's another reach, right? So we want to make sure that we're able to reach uh, beyond our, our natural and normal limitations because there's so many people who have so many skills and gifts and abilities that whereas one may not have it, another does. And so it makes for a stronger team and a stronger network across the board. You know, that that is terrific. And when you were saying that it really just tied into what we are going to talk about tonight is that uh i was telling this story i always have a story uh when i put it out there i had, was so proud of this car i had 1965 nova and i oh i love that car it was so clean but i realized that i knew nothing about oil i knew nothing about maintenance and 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 i realized that if you're going to do anything in the kingdom to advance the kingdom, you have to have God's ability in your life. So I, I thought about this, you know, I, I need some oil because I realized that I was trying so much to do it in my own strength. And I found myself being so frustrated, being so wore out, but just edgy. I, I just couldn't get myself together. Then it wasn't until I fell back and I realized that having the relationship with the Holy Spirit was what I needed. It, it was what I needed to stay in tune with myself, but most of all in tune with God. So that's what we want to deal with tonight is, you know, how can we advance the kingdom and what does it take? So uh, why is the anointing so valuable? Because I think people think it's just olive oil that they see in the pulpit. I think they they is something that is a ooey gooey feeling but you know in your perspective by you know your ministry you've been flowing and in, in your gift what god has given you why is it so important let's start there um well i think first um even when we start we have to understand um more so about what what the anointing is and because some people see it as very different things and then there are people who mix up the anointing for giftings and abilities um, though you can have gifts and, and abilities but that doesn't always necessarily mean it is anointed um, and then there's the the aspect of the anointing that is uh, considered uh, you know, we we pray over the oil and we anoint our heads. Um, so there's this application and then there's this, uh, I would say, an attribute that is surrounding and that God places upon his people that causes them to be set aside. And so what I like to consider the anointing is the, the purpose power, if you will. Ooh because it's the anointing that is encasing the uh, the power that God has placed upon his people the power that the the ability uh, that God has placed upon his people to continue or to even finish or to do the work that we're called to do and so without the anointing then we can just be we can be talented we can be gifted but it's the anointing that actually makes all the difference in yes. the outcome 
of whatever we're Ooh. operating in. So whether it's ministry or whether it's music or whether it's industry or marketplace, the anointing is what's making the difference. And so you may say, how can someone sing and 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 people just uh, you know it impacts their hearts it pricks their hearts it causes them to have an, an experience that they've never had with god and so it may not even be that they sing that well but the anointing is going to make a difference because oh, it's, it's the anointing that gets in in the thing and becomes that becomes the power of the purpose that god intends for it to have for whatever he intends to happen mm. that's the purpose power that we have it's the anointing and is and is what we're driven by because there's no way we could do any of what we do within ourselves with mm. just it is is it is this supernatural wonder working power of god you know you can call it the dunamis power of god yes. that is pressed down that is placed upon the people of god to do the do the work of the lord and and in whatever capacity he has called us to whether that is in the corporate uh world or in the church or in your family um in in your community there's an anointing the anointing makes all the difference and without it we would not have the ability to accomplish what God has called us to do. Uh, I mean, just sitting here listening to you, I mean, I'm just goosebumps because I, I realized that, like you said, it is the power. Uh, and let me let me read to you something, Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, in the book of Luke chapter four, guys. I want you to write that down somewhere, Luke chapter four, 18. And this is what Jesus said. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set liberty to those who are oppressed. So what impressed me with this scripture, not only did Jesus need the anointing, but he knew what he was anointed for. He didn't say the spirit was a, a of the Lord was upon me to sing. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord was upon me to play drums, to play keyboard, but he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the good news. So, so I believe that God anoints us for a certain mission in life. And everything ain't is not about preaching. I think some people are anointed to make you laugh. But the main thing is, is discovering what God has anointed you to do, not what Pastor Sam, not what Pastor Jackie, not, not with anybody, but being comfortable in the skin that you're in and allowing God to flow through you, allowing the oil to flow through your life to be a blessing. What would you say on that, uh, uh, Pastor Sam? Oh, I love this. I love this. And you, you hit right on the on the mark there because what Jesus is doing and, and you look at the time and what he's doing in, in Luke chapter 4, 18, what he's doing, he's standing in the midst of people who assume they know who he is with people who know his background, people who know where he come from, know his mom and them. But Ooh. yet Jesus stands up. They give him the scroll to reach. He finds the scripture. Uh, he finds the scripture where it is over in Isaiah. He goes to find it and then he, he begins to declare it. But there's a difference about his declaration as opposed to anybody else reading this. Because now, though he is declaring, he's talking about what he's reading and declaring what's, there, the, what's written about him right mm. he's talking about himself and so the the purpose and the power is meeting all at the same time and the anointing is doing it and it's so much so in his words he says listen i know what i'm here for and i'm here to do this work I, because the spirit of the lord so we must even understand the anointing doesn't come from anywhere i don't care if you pour vats of oil on everybody the anointing is still through the spirit of god so you can have oh. 10 jugs oh. of oil poured on you and still not be anointed and still just because you oily from grease y'all ain't saying that you can get fat, you can get <laughs> bacon grease on yourself but at the end of the day uh the the spirit of the lord is upon him because he has anointed me to preach anointed. lord have mercy and what did he Ooh. come doing he was preaching the kingdom he came doing and it's and it's claiming everything that god has put in him to preach the gospel to the poor he he has sent he sent him so okay now he's got to go and he's got to be be a healer 
See, you can't just do that within yourself. And Jesus begins to declare his purpose to all who are listening in the temple. And there's such an anointing on him at this time where you know it's absolute truth. Like um, the words that he's reading, is it, they come to life. And I don't know how many anointed folks are listening right now, but you know when you are operating and moving hey, hey, in your anointing, glory to God, Ooh. because you feel you actually are invigorated with life. You are, uh, you are in oh God, I would say, in, in, infused with the life that God has through the spirit that you don't get from grease or oil on your head. Hallelujah. Even though it's a mark and it's a sign. So uh, so Jesus, I love this text because he stands. And then when he finishes declaring this, when he finishes saying this, he closes the book. Once you realize, you, okay, I am in purpose. <laughs> am in purpose. He closed the book. What else Close is there to say? After you have decreed, this is what I'm anointed to do. He was clear. He was crystal clear. And he closed the book and he gave it back to the minister. Lord have mercy. Because he gave it back. He didn't need it any longer. And he sat down. What else is there to do? When you find your purpose and you understand what you're called to do. And you understand who you are. And you can decree it. And walk in it. He closed the book and, and gave it back. That's all he was asked to do was read it. And the Bible goes on. See, that's why I love the text. It goes on to say, and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogues, they were uh, fastened on him. They looked at him. It was something about him when he began to declare these words, when he began to expose himself under the anointing uh. of God. It's something about you. It's something about myself that when we begin to operate in what God has called us to do, there's a power and there's a purpose that comes together and God puts that on us and we're able to do it with you know with ease we're able to do it it seems easy and yet we're able to endure it and and and, and go through it and say it and then uh then he began to say this day has the scripture been fulfilled you've heard what I'm here for the anointing is here and this is that which I'm going to do oh but you but you know some when you were saying that not only did he whatever he said he did that let, let's go look at scripture. He said blind were blind received their sight. I mean, he, he did exactly what he proclaimed to do. So Jesus told us greater works that we would do. So I, I want to ask you, what has the, the spirit of the Lord is upon you to do? I mean, it, it may it may not be what this one is doing, but I want you to know that whatever God has anointed you to do, only you can do it and you will do it at the best of your ability. But if you're not running in your own lane and you're not happy with what God is giving you, trust me, he will find somebody who will take the baton and run with it. Yes, yes. So what has God anointed you to do? Come on, you got to start yes. asking yourself. It's important now. We can't be all over the place no more. It is time to draw a line in the sand, Pastor Sam, and discover what is the spirit of the Lord upon me to do. Absolutely. The, the goal about this and I think that is very important, Carl, is that we look at this, um, Pastor Carl, is that we look at this and we see that Jesus understands what he's been anointed to do. And mm. sometimes we don't understand that we've not even been taught to actually sit and observe, um, to watch and understand what is the call of God on my life? What is the purpose on my life? Because we are so busy looking and seeing and witnessing and, and people will say, oh, they are so anointed. And so what it does is put them or who, whomever in the eyesight of man that says, oh, if you do this, then you must be anointed. If you do that, then you must be anointed. This is what the anointing looks like. And yet for someone, so uh, for, mm. for a preacher, the anointing may not be working with numbers, but for an accountant, the anointing may be them working with numbers and understanding numbers for, and even preachers may understand accounting and all of this stuff but at the same time there's a difference and so finding that line of what we're called to do what we're purposed to do and understand that this is the will of god for my life and what we've done is we've glorified certain aspects of the anointing mm. and in general it's usually uh, focused upon those giftings that are out in front those giftings that are often seen but what about the anointing to to clean your house what about oh. the 
anointing to clean? What about the anointing to pray where nobody may see you? What about the anointing to become an intercessor? God is looking for intercessors. What about the anointing to, to um, meditate and, and get a revelation and share that? What about the anointing? Because you can be anointed for anything. It's because God has purpose in everything. Everything. There's I love that. In everything. But oftentimes we don't look at it in that sense. And we got to understand, we must understand it is because of the anointing that the yokes are destroyed. Mm. Right. So you can be functioning in a gift and in, in a talent and still not functioning in the anointing. Oh, wow. Just because you're good at something does not mean that that's what God called you to do. And oftentimes we may miss the mark because we're so busy wanting to be, like you said, not in our own lane, but running in the lane of what looks popular or what is going to get attention or what is going to get what, what really puts us out there, what causes us to be increased or enlarged. And we want the enlarged territory. But how about finding that space that God has created in the earth for us? Only for us. Yes. Listen, there is only one space for Sam and one space for Carl. And you That's can't it. take up my space. But if I hold my space down, then I won't have the struggle of trying to fit somewhere I'm I'm not called to fit. Mm. I won't have that struggle of trying to walk in the in awesome. Carl's lane or or you know, so walking into something. That's what I, I was sharing earlier. See, some people look at certain positions and titles and they want that and they want the limelight, but it's hot under the light, and we might not be able to handle the pressure that comes along with being anointed. Because when you are anointed, then there are also a, assassins from demonic levels that are called to kill you, called to Ooh, destroy you. Scripture, Even baby, some scripture. Of us before we even understand that we are even called and anointed. Mm. They were trying to kill Jesus before he was ever even uh, old enough to even make his own way. They were trying, the, the king was trying to kill Jesus. And so because of the anointing, God had to shift some things around. God had to shift mm. some things around so that the anointing, the purpose in which Jesus was born, was born could still be manifest in the earth. And so some of us will look at our own lives and don't even understand for the person who was a one night stand and yet and, and, and the mother or the father said, let's abort the baby. Somehow, I don't know how it happened, but at the end of the day, you were born or they got to the got to the clinic and they said, you too far gone. We can't abort the baby. God has a way of, of keeping those which are anointed. God has a way of ensuring that the purpose is going to come to pass. And so we, got, we have to understand that it's not, it's the anointing that he's given us so that his purpose can be fulfilled. So we get, we get too consumed with being anointed that we forget the purpose of God. We get too uh -oh. consumed with being, uh, Lord have mercy, because God has caught me. Well, at the end of the day, Jesus said, did say greater work shall you do that's because there was a greater time period we can do more because we've had more time we can do more we've had more revelation right now you can get about any any kind of information you want they didn't have that walking scrolls around they didn't have that you can google what what this was about if you like you can google what the life of jesus you can google about the gospel you can google these things and and information will just flood your computer screen but at the end of the day Jesus said, greater work shall you do, because guess what? I'm going to send you a power that's going to enable you to, to duplicate, to, to reproduce Jesus in the earth, to reproduce Jesus in the hearts of man. So it's not just coming through one man. The anointing was upon Jesus to do the work assigned to one man. And when he did that, the anointing is able to be shed abroad in the hearts of all men through the power mm. of his spirit and through the wow. power of the indwelling of his spirit glory to god and so yet we get anointed and we are called and we are purposed and yet we find ourselves saying i desire to do what god has called me to do wow and some of us don't want what comes along with the anointing we don't want the, the torment or, or the enemy trying to convince us that we're nothing. The enemy trying, and, and that's a wrestle within itself. Because if you ever realize how anointed you are, if you ever realize that you are made to walk, uh, you are made to tread upon serpents, you, are, you and I are made, we are anointed. We took the enemy's place. Listen, we are the glory carriers. We took his Ooh. place. We carry the glory of God. We carry the glory of God with us. We carry his presence. We carry 
carry who he is and yet the enemy cannot figure out how to how he can destroy us ultimately it is because we are anointed and the only power he has is that which god allows him to do or we release to him mm. He can't do anything further than what is released to him. And when you are anointed, you must understand that. I just got to talk to some anointed folk. Hallelujah. Come on now. You must understand that when you are anointed, this is, we're not giving, oh God, we're not giving an inch. We're not giving a centimeter. We're not giving millimeters to the enemy in this season. You are too anointed. You are put in this earth to destroy yokes. Yo, it could be a yoke of ignorance. Nobody oh. wants to be the teacher, but it's too many people in the dark. It's too many people walking around ignorant to the things and the kingdom of God, to the things of God. Too many people walking around that don't know him. Glory to God. It's too many people. So we don't want to be the teacher. Glory to God. It's too many children that are lost because of ignorance and nobody will take the time to teach them. Glory to God that they are called. And no matter what side of the street you are, are raised on, no matter which side of town, you come from then glory to god there's still purpose for you in the earth god doesn't do anything without purpose yes and so your presence wow. means that there is a purpose my presence means that there is a purpose and with that purpose we must continue to come forward and understand i'm not here by mistake i'm not here because somebody got drunk and hooked up i'm not here because somebody slipped up i'm not here off a mistake i'm not here if whether it be they got married and said let's have three babies and a dog and listen i am not here <laughs> by accident there's no coincidence to your presence in the earth you are here on purpose and in purpose and you are anointed for the purpose that God called you to do. And it takes time to seek God out and understand what that is. Mm. Wow. You know, I was sitting here with, I remember what Abraham said. He called us those things that be not as though they were. And I jotted something down. I said, Jesus created new things out of nothing. Out of nothing. Out of nothing. He just nothing. spoke it and stuff stopped. And I mean, he has given, it is almost like, Having a car, imagine having a Bentley and don't know all the benefits. What it does to your body, it's just not any car. It's, it is a luxury that, uh, I'm just using this for example, that the Bible is loaded with all the things that we carry, but are we using it? I mean, but, I, you know, and, and I wanted to ask you this, you know, I mean, as oily as you are, I think of, uh, Pastor Jackie down and said that you are so oily. I listen yeah. at you. But me hanging around you, does that mean it's just going to jump on me? Because I used people been saying stuff like that, that I guess they don't have to pay a price for it. They can just hang out with people like you and so many others and it just jump on them. But isn't that just saying like, if I hang around a garage, I'm going to be a car? No, that's not just like saying that, but, but it can be, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could have said a mechanic. I mean, I just saying, I mean, I'm saying I wasn't thinking of car, but nevertheless. Okay. Uh, that's, that's just my other side. Praise the Lord. My funny side. I, I know. So, so what, what you saying? And, and, and it, it seems like, uh, what we have to understand. So some people think they're just hanging around and then, so we got to look at our posture right? Yes. We have to look at our posture. Are you around me or are you in place and posture to receive impartation? Because there good. is. So no. And, and I heard you say uh, about the cost or paying the price for the anointing. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm just going to challenge your theology, challenge your thoughts right here just for a moment, yeah. because uh, we are there is no price that we can pay for the anointing to That's get right. the anointing the reason i say that is because some children are well we're anointed at birth mm. john the baptist was anointed at birth he was filled with the holy ghost from before he was even born so he was already anointed and so there are children who are already anointed are born anointed so we must understand that we can't pay a price for the anointing though there is a cost to walking and keeping and walking in the anointing yes 
So there's a difference. Um, some people think, that, well, if I suffer, well, you just going to suffer. That doesn't mean that you're going to be more or less anointed. If I'm obedient or disobedient, it's a lot of anointed, disobedient children. And when I say children, I don't mean by age. I mean children as in children of God. There are a lot of disobedient people in the earth that are still anointed. God's not taking it back. Lord have mercy. I wish somebody understood that tonight. Whether you obey him or not, he's not taking it back. You're still That's called. You're still qualified. You're still the one that he wants to use to do certain works. And there are some of us who are not walking in the anointing and, and holding others back and not able to release and unlock glory to God, not able to release and unlock the lives of others because we're not moving in the anointing we're called to do. So circling back to your question, you ask yourself, is there a way that you can get it? So I would say even how we're postured, you look at the, uh, at the lives of the disciples right? The lives of the disciples, they walked, when Jesus said, follow me, they walked with mm. him, they followed him, they sat, they received impartation, and yet a uh, majority of them still had no revelation of who he was. It was the spirit of the Lord moving upon Peter to say, thou art the son of God. Hallelujah. It was the spirit. So then uh, they were they were too busy worrying about who's going to sit on the left side or the right side. They were too busy worrying about Jesus. They're doing what we're doing. They're, they're too busy worrying about, what if they are doing the same thing that you're doing. If you are anointed to do it, then do it <laughs> and understand that God has anointed you to do it as well. Glory to God. And so then they were, so the disciples didn't even know who he went, who he was and, and is at this time. And so even to the point where though Judas was called, <laughs> Judas was called and right up under him and watched him and, and did watch him do the works and helped him do the works and was even sent out and did and cast out devils in the name of God and did the work that Jesus sent them to do. Judas did that too. And yet he wasn't postured properly when time was so necessary for him to be postured properly. And so he became a betrayer. Mm. Wow. And so some of us have to understand you can be right in the midst of those who are anointed and you can receive impartation. Look at, okay, we'll go back a little further because the principles of God still remain the same. Old Testament, New Testament, we'll go back a little further. Um, King Saul, well, he wasn't a king then, but he was a young boy out looking for the donkeys. But when he came upon the company of the prophets, he began to prophesy. Ah. Uh. He wasn't a prophet, but the spirit that was resonated, glory to God, the spirit of the Lord that was there, hallelujah. He began to prophesy, but though he wasn't a prophet, some of us are, Lord, it's just residue. <laughs> some of us <laughs> got residue on us, but that doesn't Ooh. mean that we are anointed. So uh, that is why sometimes we get in churches and we get in these atmospheres and we go out and we go, we under the spirit of the living God and we feel the power on us and we walk out and think we can do what we saw other folks doing. And yet the power is lifted. The spirit is no longer there as it was when we were at this certain place. And so we don't realize why is it not working for me? Because baby, that was where you were postured and you were sitting under that glory to God. And so it's not necessarily a transfer without the spirit of God being uh, moved upon you. And so Jesus did that for his disciples. He breathed on them. Ooh. That they received the spirit. Now, this was before the Holy Spirit quote unquote we read in acts and they were all in the upper room and and then there was this great noise a noise as a mighty rushing wind right but guess what somebody had to already have experienced it so that they could explain it when he came so the mm. disciples had already received they were already postured properly they were already in position to receive. And so we got to understand you can be around me and never. And so that's what people get twisted up on because the anointing doesn't belong to us. Oh, that's right. We wow. walk in it. The anointing. That is why the God, get, that's why God gets the glory. The anointing that doesn't belong to us. It is part of God wow. and his spirit being released upon us to do the work that we've been called to do. It is only for the purpose that we are here. The anointing is not for us to take possession. It is not for us to uh, pimp and, and prom. It is not for us to, wow. uh, Lord, it is not for us to prostitute. 
Lord, thank you, God. He's so good. Smile so it feels better. It is not for us to use as if we have some possession on this thing, the anointing, and it should work together. I'm not jealous of you and what you're called to do. You're not jealous of me and what I'm called to do. We should work mm. together so that when we are united, then the spirit of God can do even greater works. Wow. I see Whitney Renee said even on the last on um, Jesus had to deal with Judas, but he didn't give up. Let me explain. God said to me, said this to me, Whitley, this is just for <laughs> you and I. He this just for you and I, honey. He said to me, he said, Judas was there. So you're gonna have some folks with you. Judas was there the entire time of his ministry. And yet Jesus was focused, he still made impact, and he was effective. How many of us have so many distractions that we can't walk in our anointing? What if Ooh. Jesus would have got out, out, out of out of focus? What if Jesus would have became unfocused? Uh, the scripture says that we should be steadfast. Thank you, Pastor Charles. We should be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the works of the Lord. But some of us too tripped up on what Judas is doing to realize, wait a minute. Oh, uh, Jesus has anointed Ooh. me. We can't worry about Judas in this season. We can't worry about what, what Sally Bay and them are doing. We can't worry about that because we still have a call and we still have an anointing. And my purpose in that, what? so we got to find the yoke. What am <laughs> I here to destroy? What am, I'm, I'm a weapon of mass destruction to the kingdom of hell. I'm a weapon. The enemy don't like me and I don't like him. Satan don't like me and I don't like him. Because when you show up, Carl, when I show up, then we are designed to destroy the yokes the enemy is placing upon people. Oh, my God. In whatever capacity that means that we're to operate in. Ooh. Whatever that looks like. Then your assignment is to become a yoke destroyer because you're anointed. Oh, wow. My assignment. And it could be in whatever it could be. OK, so it could be standing in the garage. That's right. It could be figuring out how to fix things in a faster, more efficient, less costly way. Maybe you're not. You destroy the yoke of debt on somebody's life. It could yes. be in the courtroom being a lawyer trying to it, it could be because guess what? We are the spirit of God is moving so that he can work in any place at any time. Wow. That's we're good. anointed for that. And so when you look at, you know, what is really happening and how to pull that all together and understand, uh, though, though uh, they may take us up and, and put us and anoint our heads with oil and and, and cause there, there's that's just a sign. That's a symbol. The oil is not the anointing. It's the spirit that's working. And, and, and it's just a point of reference for us. Right. It's like a marker for us that says I have been anointed and God is seeing something special on me in me that he wants to use. Oh, boy. And so and so we can we can put the little cross X might marks the spot or, or pour it on your head. But there is something special about the anointing. So it comes from yeah. even the special recognition that there is something special about you and myself. There is something special about us that God is saying, I'm recognizing this or that our fathers or our, our spiritual parents are recognizing. They may say, come on, let me anoint you because it's almost like a reminder. Let me do this physical thing, right? Uh, it's like a reminder that you are set aside. The anointing uh, causes us to be set aside for specific and special works. Uh -huh. It is not. That's why when you're anointed, you can't just do anything and everything. Lord have mercy. When, when you are, when we are anointed, everything doesn't work for us like it will work for anybody else. It doesn't yes. work. It doesn't work. No longer does it work. And so that is why some things we don't function in because that's not what I'm anointed to do. I'm not anointed to do certain things in ministry, though I see others do it effectively. Wow. And we may do it different. But it's not about the method as much as it is the message. You're preaching the truth. I mean. And so we miss it. Ooh. We miss it because we're focused on the wrong things. And we don't recognize that God has anointed us for to do something. And then maybe it could be, Carl, I'll even say it could be that we haven't even been in the right environments. We haven't yes. been in environments that will support us being uh, uniquely different. Um, just uh. because you have a testimony and that doesn't mean everybody doesn't have to preach 
everybody doesn't have to preach in a pulpit. Oh, oh my God. Can I just, because there was this era where everybody who was on drugs and they had this powerful testimony was going to preach. I mean, there, there was an era wow. that everybody that's, so all of a sudden, all these people who would stand up and give a testimony, everybody wanted to be the worst because that meant my ministry was going to be so great because I have been to the lowest of lowest. And all those things were choices because I know some people who are powerful and haven't smoked nothing. Right. Because I, you said this, you said this, it backs it up with scripture because we were no, we were anointed in our mother's womb. Come on, somebody. I mean, so when I got here, the decisions I made had nothing to do with what God wanted to do in my life. I, it was already planned out. Yes. That is just, that is just, woo. Because there were people who were thinking that. Every time you talk to somebody, oh, sis, I'm just going through. Oh, Lord, I'm just going through. Oh, Lord, baby, I'm just going through. You know, the sadder you were, you know, that means that God was more present in your life. But the truth be taken, the more happier I am, good God Almighty, the more present he is, that I can watch you get promoted. I can watch you drive circles around me. I can watch everything you do and not be jealous because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I can watch it. I can watch your ministry grow without worrying about when it's going to fall apart. I can watch you and support you because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let's think about this. I heard you. I heard you. But it made me think about when Jesus had, when the Lord sent uh, Samuel down to Jesse's house. Mm -hmm. And all his sons lined up and they were good looking and, and they they looked like kings, but they weren't kings. And the oil would not run. So, so, so Sam, you knew there had to be another one. And all of a sudden, yeah, I got another one. He over, I mean, wouldn't he call his son's name? Yep, I got another one. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to some another ones today, black sheep underdogs there is an anointing that's coming for you help me pastor sam yeah absolutely. Lord have mercy there is an anointing coming and and i'll even so so it was before the purpose of us being in the womb is because of what we're anointed to do come on now i love uh, it the purpose he tells he tells the prophet jeremiah before i formed you in the womb i knew you and then he goes on to say what jeremiah was anointed to do the whole purpose of Jeremiah being put in the womb before being formed, the whole purpose of you and I being formed in the womb yes. is because of what God has anointed us to do. It is because, listen, the olive does not have to be crushed to still have the oil in it. Ah, boy. The only oh way God. some of us know that the oil is there is through the crushing. But the oil is still there in the olive. Before it's even crushed. And so you said it. You you said it so much. There are those. They, um, they did not call David uh, to the table. David wasn't even considered to be fully a son. Right? Ooh, because of yes. who his mother. They had different mothers. People don't talk about that. They don't talk mm -hmm. about the ones who are cast aside, who are ostracized, or the ones who are, you know, marginalized and put outside. The other ones, right? And, yeah. and so the way I like it, whosoever will, we can come now. <laughs> We can I love whosoever. it. I'm a whosoever. I'm a other one. I, I'm a black sheep. And, and so whatever. But black sheep are still sheep. And so that's what I love about God is because he does not, uh, he does not eliminate. He does not uh, cause anyone to be pushed out. He, everything he does is for uh, everyone to be gathered to him, to be reconciled to him. And that is what God wants us to do, to even understand that we are anointed and it does not matter. See, it, it does not matter even through your bloodline, through your generational 
all the generational curses. Listen, you live through all the generational curses just to break them and destroy them. Lord have mercy. Oh, God. God allowed you to come through all the generations. Look at Jesus came through 40 and two generations. According to the text, he, it was 40 and two generations before Jesus was born. But he was born at the right time to destroy the, right the yoke time. that was in his bloodline. Lord have mercy. And he, not only in his bloodline, but in the bloodline of mankind so that we could be redeemed. Glory to God through the blood. Lord have mercy. That's why I am so glad that God sent Jesus. God sent his only son because a natural man could not have done that. He mm. had to be anointed and purposed by God. He had to be uh, selected and hand selected. And God said, who better than myself to go and be the one to redeem them through the same, re through the same manner in which I birthed them and purposed them in the earth. Lord, I wow. love you, God. And so he's so Ooh. good to do that for us. And, and so when we understand, so though, like you said, the oil would not flow. That's They could have been kings, but the oil still wouldn't flow on them. The oh. oil wouldn't oh. flow. He, he could have he could have said, you're the next king. He could have said that because they were tall, they were strong, they looked good, they had the stature, they had the age, they were, but he said, no, nah, it's got to be another one because the oil won't flow. Listen, got I want to tell one. somebody, don't you worry about your space in the earth. They cannot do what you can do. They can't even, listen, the prophet wouldn't even let them eat until the right one was anointed. Glory to God. Some <laughs> of us have to understand, they will not eat the benefits of what God has purposed for me, for my family, Ooh, until wee. I get anointed, until the oil begins to flow, until the oil flows on my head, until the oil begins to flow in your life. There were others who will not eat. And though they can be at the table, David said it, he prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. And I'm not afraid. He Listen, we don't have to be afraid to sit down and eat, to sit down because the oil is on you. Lord have mercy. Some the of us, oil is on you. some folks are just ashy in this season with no oil y'all know we need to uh, up a little bit and, and sometimes <laughs> and things happen so that is where we understand that god said i gotta put a little more oil there so there has to be a little pressing a little crushing there has to be uh some pressure lord y'all want to apply some pressure get anointed glory to god let god want to use you you want to be under pressure hallelujah uh, get uh, become god's child become god's vessel say lord i'm gonna do what you called me to do and as soon as you say it then you watch how the anointing has to be in place for you to keep your mind for you to keep doing the work even when you tired and nobody else is working you are anointed god will get you up again restore you energize you and get you going again when you are a nobody when you it doesn't that matter if you're nobody see there's too many nobodies and somebody's hallelujah and everybody can be somebody hallelujah everybody so we understand that everybody is anointed glory to god it's a matter of whether we posture ourselves to walk in it whether we posture ourselves to receive it because as soon as we as soon as it gets hard we don't want all that we don't need all that but let me explain something to you something to i keep repeating to myself when you are anointed there is nothing mm. that god will allow to overtake you to take you under there is nothing that god will allow because he desires for you to come through. God wants you to win. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to grow. He wants you to develop. He wants you to move forward, not stay back. He wants you to move forward and not be hindered. God, so it is It is most important for you and I to let the anointing be effective in our lives. Jesus was so anointed that when they went to lay their hands on him, they couldn't touch him. Jesus was so anointed that even at death threats, they could not kill him. They could not kill him until he gave his life. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus was so anointed. And listen, he is our ultimate example. That when we are persecuted, Lord have mercy, we can take it and be quiet. When we are persecuted, oh my God. we can be killed and still come back to life. That's for the one. Oh, Lord, they done killed you with everything. They done threw all the stones. Listen, Paul gives us an example. They stoned Paul. And because he was still anointed to do more works, he the, the saints prayed. It wasn't the anointing of Paul, but it was the purpose that he had that stirred the anointing of the people to get around him to pray. And God... 
added the increase and brought him back to life. Paul didn't die when they thought he should have died because he was anointed. Now, I don't know. Now, that's not my testimony. I don't want to have it more hard just to say I'm anointed. No, I, sir. I don't want to be, I have to go out and be on skid row or be on drugs or anything and i have some wonderful friends wonderful anointed friends who haven't had a hard life as we would say they haven't had it bad and they are anointed and will preach anointed. you under a pew and preach you under the carpet and and preach dust up from a muddy road hallelujah glory <laughs> to God. And, and but guess what they have an anointing on them yes they have a relationship and they have postured themselves as we posture ourselves to walk in the will of god he will anoint us afresh oh as we posture ourselves to do the things that god wants us to do he will anoint us afresh it is the anointing that will continue to stir in you when you feel like as some of my friends and i say yeah i can't go no further it is that anointing that will cause you to push through and persevere through to ensure that what you're called to do is accomplished it oh is the God. purpose power that God gives us. Purpose power. Spirit. It is his purpose and his power meeting all in one place and working for us in such a way that nobody can deny you anointed. Nobody can, even, even the unbeliever. See, when you are anointed, the unbeliever will even acknowledge that something is something about him. It's, I don't know oh, yes. It it's oh, yes. I was getting ready to go there because I remember uh, I was listening to uh pat uh pastor jackie down and she was saying she was having this day and this young lady came to her and uh you know she spoke something into her life and i i guess what i'm saying is is that your anointing is just not for church no oh not. <laughs> i mean has i mean i i have had those encounter where the anointing draws people just you you think people standing around you and want to talk to you because you smell good and you look no it's something on your life you have been uniquely made and it's something about you that you have you don't have rights to it you don't have rights to brag about it i mean you can't like it's all mine no you were not anointed to sit you were anointed to spread this gospel and be a conduit that blesses somebody you may be the only Jesus somebody sees on your job. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we got to start acting like who we are. Don't I, I don't want to be all it just to look good. Oh, oh, I'm in my seat now and I am rubbing so and so. No, I don't want to be anointed for that. I want to be anointed. So like the, <laughs> the Bible says that, that, that check this out. They were laying people on the streets. Mm hmm trying to get in the shadow of peter now mm -hmm. i mean not to lay hands but if the shadow could just overcast they knew they would be healed what an anointing oh yes. if i could just be in your presence and just i mean you ain't got to say nothing but just get in there see god wants us to be conduits out in the earth realm this ain't for you to impress nobody this all is for real and is available for everybody it is. oh man so does god i mean <laughs> does he anoint us to set i mean i mean i mean somebody may be wondering well what am i anointed to do i mean i've tried this i've tried that and you know i i mean i'm all over the place i mean what am i anointed to do oh so is that the question okay yeah um, so for, for the one who's saying, what am I anointed to do? Um, so then you have to be, you and I, and all of us have to stay and remain in this place of seeking the Lord um, yes. and building that relationship. And then even walking out um, be, because there's this, there's this ideal uh, that the anointing is so obvious, right? Because we notice and we recognize those who are walking in anointings that are usually seen more than heard or more than experienced personally or privately and so that is our exposure to the anointing or what we know wow. as the anointing and so even beginning in posture it, it goes back to posture you know posturing yourself in relationship with god in such a way that you actually when you ask the question he's given the answer and some of us do not even receive the answer that he's given 
Mm. You may not be anointed to do the great big thing. It may be something small or what we consider small or what is not considered as popular as others. And so yet we're saying, well, what I want to do something. I want to. I want to I want to do something for God. Well, what if it's a small I, I. thing? Right? And nothing's yes. wrong with desiring to do things for the Lord. Nothing is abs no, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the the challenge is I want to do the things that I am purposed to do as opposed to the things that I see being done. Ooh, that may or may yes. not be what God wants me to do. For example, what if you are anointed to greet people and and what if you're anointed to uh, to build and encourage people and your only role is in or, or your only access in doing that is being the greeter at the walmart oh man the anointing works no matter where you are no matter where you are listen mine works on aisle five in the walmart and it works on aisle 12 in the food line but on aisle five in the walmart my anointing Come on works. There. That's over there where the snacks at. <laughs> Love it. That's over there. But listen, my anointing works. But at the same time, if we are so uh, distracted by everyday circumstances, everyday situations, every, we're distracted by any little thing. Our attention and our focus, our attention span is so small that when God is moving, because listen, he doesn't move in our time. He moves in Cairo's time. That is in Ooh, his time. Yes. He doesn't move when we think he should be moving. And so that is why sometimes we miss the moments wherein wow. we can be effective in the anointing. You said it. We can be effective. It doesn't matter anywhere. You can be at the counter at the grocery store. You can be uh, in, in line at, at the store. You can be anywhere. You can be shopping. You, you may have an anointing. And so that's why we have to be mindful and in tune with the spirit of God at all times. And a lot of times we cut that off. When I leave church, I leave church. I leave the spirit there. My Monday through Saturday is my Monday through Saturday. I do what I want to do. I don't think about what is God leading me to pray for someone today? Is God leading me to go to a certain place today? Because there's going to be somebody who's going to need a vessel who will hear him and do what he says to do. A lot of us, oh. we, we can be so anointed, like you said, that we get distracted by the anointing. So I'll go back. I said it and I'll say it again. We cannot be distracted even by the anointing. That's a good word. We get so caught up by the anointing that we miss the purpose. And so when we are walking outside of purpose, then the anointing is no longer effective. It's, no, it's not going to impact anybody. And so we find ourselves in the place, uh, Pastor Carl, we find ourselves saying, well, what am I anointed to do? Well, honey, if you would just be obedient. Ah. First of all, we're anointed to be witnesses. See, if, and read the word. We're anointed to be witnesses. We are. He gives us power to be witnesses. If you don't do anything else, can you be a witness? For the Lord. Can you be a witness? I love it. And it didn't say where. It said unto the, you know, it names all the cities, unto all the earth. Right? So that's where you are, where I am. So have you even been a witness yet? Have uh. you even sharpened your understanding? See, because other faiths and other religions, they're sharp. <laughs> Do you even sharp? Have we sharpened our understanding to where we can contend for the faith, where we can defend the gospel? Yes. Paul, Paul had his, his, they call him Saul and Paul, but he had it. He was, he was so sharp in his understanding of religion and scrolls and the scriptures that he was persecuting the very one who he was called to be purposeful in, in receiving into the kingdom and helping get into the kingdom. But when he understood what he was anointed to do, he became even sharper. He used those skills. What skills do you have? What talents do you have? So you can begin to search those things out. We can begin. And, and the anointing is so vast that you can't define it to one particular thing. Because by the time you're working in one thing, God may anoint you for something else. Yes. It wow. can be there or it will cause the anointing can excavate other gifts and abilities in you that you had that you did not know was there. Mm. There are certain times when I can do certain things. So you said it. God anointed and he used the he used the apostles that even they people were getting healed in their shadows. And we got to look at what was happening. He was setting up and establishing the growth and the maturity of his church. He was um, causing his his disciples who were now apostles to go out and begin to walk in boldness, walk in and see if some of us don't even pray for boldness. What if God tells you to do something? What if you're anointed to do something that you've never seen anybody? do oh i like this you've never seen anybody do it and yet god called you to do it what does that look like well you don't know and i don't know until we walk in it 
because it may not look like something we've ever seen. The apostles hadn't, they hadn't seen that. They saw Jesus do it, but that was the whole point. Do you listen, when Peter went into the room with the, uh, when Peter went into the room with, with the uh, little girl who was there, when he went into the room with Dorcas, when he went into the room, he didn't know what to do, but he did what he saw Jesus do. <laughs> he put them out and he spoke to, and she got up just like the damsel did for Jesus. So some of it is, and so some of us, so that's where you can even, so you talked about transfers and stuff like that. We can even, there can be mentors and we can be mentees yes. that there are mantles that can, that we can actually catch. You can't catch a mantle just cause you like them. Just cause you follow them on, on Facebook, <laughs> just cause you, follow, you watched every video. That doesn't mean that you're going to catch their mantle. That means that you can mock them and you can do what they do. And you can act mm. like them, but that doesn't mean that you catch the mantle from what they had on their life. Okay, that's just for those who who faking it right now. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, but God. you know something? But that's good. That's it good. Is good. It is good. It is good. And it gets even better because when we understand that when we walk in the authentic, genuine anointing of God, there will be no, we don't have to use gimmicks. We don't have to use manipulation. God will draw to you who he desires to come to you. He will draw to you what is necessary for you to continue to function. He will establish you. God was establishing his church. He began to allow the apostles to walk in special miracles. That's why Paul could preach and take handkerchiefs off himself. He got, the Bible says that he was allowed. God anointed him with special miracles that people would take the handkerchief. And they would go and lay it on the sick and they would get healed. Come on. And so now everybody want a prayer cloth. Now you selling the prayer cloth. Now you selling the oil. Now you praying over. Listen, get your own oil. Pray over your own oil. Pray over your, cut up your, cut up a towel, cut up a dishcloth, whatever you need. Get your own stuff. Pray over it. Believe in God. He has anointed you. And guess what? It's not about people having more power. Some people are just, um, allow God to move more, um, Fluently yes. through them because wow. the power is the same. It's the same, the, the same, same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power. It's not going to be more or less. The, the more or less. Um, so you said it, a conduit, a conduit can be a free flow or you can control what goes through it. Ooh. Ooh. So, Ooh. so us seeking God. Okay, Lord. So for the one who says, what am I anointed to do? Okay. That, that's the seeking and that's the searching. It's not you. You can't Google that. You can find some you good can't Google that one. but you can't Google that. This is sincerely going to come from your relationship with God and you may not get it overnight. We have been so uh, desensitized to think that the kingdom of God is, is just comes at the snap of our fingers, but uh -huh. we're not God. The kingdom of God doesn't move at our beckoning call. Uh-huh. He's a very, yes. listen, he's a very present help in time of trouble, but that doesn't mean he's going to help you in when you think you're in trouble. That doesn't mean that oh, your help is going to come when you think, because Kairos is not fundamentally based in Kronos. And so what God wants to do, and he's beginning to stretch that out, I believe, even at this time in this season of the church, we have to look at what's happening in the kingdom of God. Now there's this, because there has been a lack of the move of God, a lack of power in demonstration. Now, for those of us who are hungry and thirsty, there is this, this revival, if you will. There is this restoring, hallelujah, a longing yes. that we have for the things in the kingdom of God to manifest in our presence. I don't care what nobody says. The church of the living God is the most powerful entity. It is the most powerful organism and organization that God has ever made or allowed to be alive. Mm -hmm. I I love the church. I love the body of Christ. The church is not dead. Now, though there may, may be some people who are walking dead, but the church is not dead. The church of God is alive and well. The church of God is anointed to live through what we consider to be death. The church of God is anointed for times like these. When you can't afford health care, you better learn how to anoint yourself and get healed. When you can't afford, hallelujah, to do everything and when you, listen, you might have to learn how to lay hands on your cabinets, lay hands on your fridge and say, God, multiply it to where your two fish and your five loaves feed all your 10 children, Ooh. your husband <laughs> and your cousins. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But at the end of the day, the body of Christ has got to begin to understand and seek God out. 
or even find the voices that we can sit under, find the voice, um, whether it be pastors, mentors, um, find the voice that God, everybody needs a pastor. If you don't have a pastor, you need a pastor, an anointed pastor. And because there are pastors, find the voice. That Key is word, anointed. anointed. There's a well. There, some never mind. There is um, there is a specific anointing when God is trying to get you from one place to the next. There's an anointing that God will place even in the voice of whomever, so that you will be led and be guided mm. to that place. So that we can be led and be guided. And it's a hard thing where we find ourselves not even understanding our anointing. So who's going to teach you how to flow in it? See, some people just know they're anointed and they don't need nobody to teach them. Uh. Some of us don't even want glory to God. They don't want to sit and submit. They don't want to sit long enough to receive an impartation. Because I, I heard you, nobody just wants to sit on the bench. But let me explain something to you. When the when the, in the championship game, even if you sit on the bench, everybody who on the team wins. That's right. Ooh. Everybody who on the team get a check. Everybody who on the team get a ring. Is that right? I mean, okay, I'm not, you know, but but I think that's right. I think that's right. You're right. Everybody on the team is celebrated and everybody connected to them, it begins to celebrate. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Because of the anointing, then what happens is, and when we operate in the in the kingdom of God, and I'm not just talking about this church stuff people do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm not talking about that. Um, the, because of the kingdom of God, we've got to get to a place to where we understand the kingdom of God in itself is, is, is put in place so that uh. people can come through. People can come through how they are, They that others, that whoever is connected to you, whoever is connected to me, like we're that. all connected through the spirit of God. This mm. is not a natural thing. The anointing is not, you can't pay for it. Look at what happened to Simon the sorcerer. He wanted to get the anointing. No, no, no. You can't pay for this. You can't swindle this thing. And I don't, listen, for how many ever may be manipulating or selling it or prostituting the anointing. Listen, there's going to come a time where the genuine oil is going to hit your life in one way or the other. Glory to God. Oh. Genuine spirit of God. Genuine. There's a day of reckoning coming, whether it be on this side or the other side of the earth. And we don't have time, glory to God, to function in what could be, what should be. We have time to function. God has given us time to function in what he has called for, the, to decree those things that be not as though they were. The anointing is going to speak to where you're going, not where you are. The anointing is here and is used by God to unlock destinies. The anointing is used to destroy yokes of bondage so that people and uh, his creation can move forward. The anointing is used. The anointing is for the purpose. It is the purpose power in pushing the kingdom that. agenda forward. It is for the purpose of doing the will of God. And it's not only in the church and that's why i'm mindful hmm. and i ask god to remind me everywhere i am because sometimes we forget sometimes we doing too much and sometimes we're just not even thinking about it we just want to have a day to ourselves but when you are called by god when you are a servant yes. of the lord that ain't that's that's not just for folk with title when you say that you are okay so we can be saved we can be saved everybody can be saved but then there's this place where Jesus becomes our Lord. So we want to say, I thank my Lord and my Savior. So he's your our Savior first. And yes. then through a relationship, he's recognized as our Lord. See, some people just saved and he hasn't become their Lord yet. Oh, shut. Oh, boy. That's good. Because when, when he's our Lord, then it doesn't matter where you are. He can use you anytime. He can mm. use us anytime. And so when he is our Lord, so then when, when he says, okay, uh, and now, okay, let me, let me open up this oil. <laughs> let's, let's put it, let's pour out a little oil now. Let's see what they're going to do. And so that's why you could tell because people, they can go to church faithfully. They can read their Bibles faithfully. But when God requires of you, when oh, God wow. says, I have need of you, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm in Holy Week now. Oh, we know, we know. The, Jesus got need <laughs> for the donkey. Don't nobody want to be the donkey. <laughs> Don't Ooh. nobody want to let him ride. Hallelujah. Might be too much weight on your back. 
Nobody want okay. But anyway, but but don't nobody because see they're gonna they're gonna talk about you, they're gonna they're gonna look at you, they're gonna see you. It might be odd, it may feel uncomfortable. Being anointed is not mm. necessarily comfortable. The yeah. anointing is going to call you out of your comfort zone because it's not you doing it, it's us. Oh wow, it's not you. It is, it's, it is, it is us coming out of ourselves. Like it's nobody else, right? I don't have, Carl, you don't have to do this for me. It's me. I have to, cause see what, what you're comfortable in doing, right? You get on this and you, you do good life and good life TV and all this, but what you're comfortable in doing, I'm not, but the anointing says, this is where I want you right now. And this is what I'm going to assign you to do. Yes. Right now. And you're going to speak to people, Sam, and this is what I'm doing. And the, and the spirit begins to say, so you're, the anointing is going to require of us things that we've never even thought we had to submit. Wow. Because we, we want to be our own person. I'm grown. I've been grown for a little while now. Who who's gonna tell me? But listen, but when Jesus is Savior and Lord, yes, then he can use us anytime. And so the anointing, and so that's why we even have to be mindful. It doesn't matter where you are, because the anointing, the call of God, the purpose of God is on your life and my life in such a way that he can call on it anytime. Mm. He doesn't Lord need a pager. He doesn't need a cell phone. He doesn't need any of that. The anointing is on us in such a way and it's within us. And God knows how to stir it up. God knows. And so sometimes you have to sit down and, and like Paul and, and remind somebody, stir up the gift that's already in you. That was putting you yes. with the hand on your hands. I know. God says, I know what's in you. I know the oil that I have in you. I know the oil that I have in you because I put it there. And I will use whatever I will to stir it up in you. If it has to be trouble. See, some of us didn't learn how to pray until trouble hit. Some of us didn't learn how to fast. Y'all, Lord, we don't want to fast. We want to go out and eat and do everything else. We want to. We don't want to turn our plate down. What, what are we anointed to do? Turn your plate Lay down. See if you can sacrifice a little bit. Mm. Can you? How long? Wow. How long do I have? To, now this might not be a twenty-one day. This ain't a Daniel thing. This is until you get it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, I don't have time to do all that. Well, okay. Well, then find a way to get postured in a place with God, so you can seek the Master Thank and you. find Him, and find out what He's saying to you concerning you. Yeah. He'll talk to you. And then you have those. You may have your pastor. You may go to your leaders and say, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. And I'm trying to do this. And I heard you say some people are actually trying things. Try what you're good at. Yes. You're good at it for a reason. That's good. Try or, or learn a new skill. Or even um, there are things, um, if, if you're anointed, okay, let me just use this because uh, it's just most prevalent. Everybody thinks about it. If you're anointed to preach and you're scared of crowds, and take a public speaking course. They yeah. offer them free. Work on yourself. Study. Fast. Pray. Meditate. Build yourself oh, up boy. on your most holy faith. Speaking in tongues. I know everybody don't believe in that, but we believe in that. God believe in that. He says speaking tongues. That's right. The room and speaking tongues to your tongue come out strong till the Holy Ghost take over. Speaking the tongue, <laughs> you know, to the Holy Ghost. Never mind. I right, listen. <laughs> but some of us have to understand the anointing is there, and there are he, there is a there's a cost. You may have to sacrifice your yes. own desires to walk in the anointing. It may not be what you thought it was going to be. And yet you are still anointed and yet you are still called. And God says to us, I still am going to use you and I'm not going to take it back. Wow. I love it, man. This has been so I could just pick your brain some more. I, ain't, I we didn't even get through half our questions, but we needed to go where you went to. And thank you so much. Pastor Sam is always how you allow God to use you before you come back to to let us go in your own way how we do it here on the good life i i hope someone out there you know didn't take this for granted because god wants to use you i guess you're saying well carl i mean you just don't know my life but god does i may not he does but he is called you for such a time as this but if you are not open and receptive 
about what he wants to do, you may never receive it. If you think the oil is for everybody else, you may never receive it. Well, I'm not good enough. You may never receive it. But if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and God raised him from the dead, that's, a, that's the beginning right there. But I believe God has work of you and there's all for everybody. There's enough for everybody. Wow, man, this has been good. Pastor Sam, thank you so much. Uh, as you come back, guys, thank y'all so much for coming out tonight and hanging with us. You know, only my sister, she could just do what she want to do, go over time, whatever. I let her just do that. And I mean, she is just my friend, my sister. She is just awesome. And I love her. And thank you for allowing God to use you. So thank all of you for coming out tonight. Uh, Pastor Sam, as you, as you come back and, and release us, I, I just believe God wants to activate somebody tonight. I believe God wants to activate somebody on here tonight. It's just like some things, batteries are not included. You got to go get it. I mean, but God wants to put the batteries in your life. He is ready to use you. And it's time for you to open your heart. I just believe that tonight. I don't know who God is speaking to, but whoever it is, I believe God wants to use you and activate you. So Pastor Sam, we put it back into your hands. Pray whatever you desire to do. Thank y'all. We'll see you uh, the last Sunday of April. Have a happy Easter. Remember what the season is all about. Pastor Sam is on you. Glory to God. If you guys would do me a favor, if you could even just drop your name uh, in the in the chat, drop your name in the live. We're going to be praying. And so as you drop your name, the Lord yes. is going to cover that with his spirit, cover you as you decree and, and, and let your own name be written. We believe in God to cover and anoint. Yes. And Every one of us. So just be, uh, thank you so much for while you guys for obedience and doing that if you can. And if not, we know that God knows your name, knows our name as well. Absolutely. What I want to say you. to someone, even as you're seeking and, and walking in the anointing, um, yes. it is going to be, it is going to be absolutely necessary for us to walk in obedience to God. Walk in obedience to God, understand who God, um, who he is, and then understand that that flow will come. It, it will come to you and there's no hindrance as we obey God. So I'm going to pray oh. and I'm going to believe God. There's no hindrance as we believe God. And as you type your name, as you uh, scrap your name out, as we believe God, we're believing God that the oil of the anointing of the yes. Lord is going to flow tonight. It's going to flow uh, from, from heaven. It's going to flow from the presence of God. It's going to flow right to you. And that God is good as we posture ourselves in receptive mode, right? We're postured tonight. So let us pray. God, we thank you now. Thank Hallelujah. You, we glorify you. We ask lord first and foremost that you be lifted up god hallelujah yes. glory to god you be lifted up above anything hallelujah and everything that will hinder us from understanding your your spirit and your purpose in our life right now god in the name of jesus lord we ask that you would bless call claiborne hallelujah uh that you would bless pastor call claiborne in the name of jesus glory to god that you will anoint him afresh to do this work Glory to God that you will anoint him afresh to do this work, that you will anoint him, God, hallelujah, to have your way. Glory to God in the name of Jesus, that you will anoint him, hallelujah, to do what you want him to do, God, in the name of Jesus, that he would find purpose as only he can, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. That such an anointing that's on this broadcast right now. The good life, glory Ooh. to God, hallelujah, will expand to be in an anointed life. That our lives would not only be good, but they would be anointed, that they would be filled with the power of your spirit lord in the name of jesus that your spirit begin to flow and move upon every believer every receiver tonight in the name of jesus we thank you for this kairos moment glory to god mm. where there's a shifting it out of my shop glory thank to you. god hallelujah upon every listener every believer right now father that you hit the house of beverly and katara lord in the name of jesus that you will hit the house that there will be a flow of oil hallelujah that cannot yes. be stopped god we thank you that you are not Thank taking you, 
Lord. The anointing, God, but that you would continue to override every demonic Bless your in name. The name of Jesus. Uh, that the anointing would begin to destroy the yokes of bondage. Thank you, Lord God. The yokes of ignorance. The yokes of I don't know in the name of Jesus. We Bless your name, God, Jesus. Doing it now for Tamika and Jackie, for Kashana. Glory to yes. God. In the name of Jesus. Bless now, Lord God. Do it as only you can, God. That you would do it for them, God, in such a way that Denise yes, Lord. is anointed. Somebody begin to decree and understand within yourself. Yes. I have been anointed to live through this. I have been anointed to do the works of God. I have yes. been anointed to display his glory in the earth. I have been anointed to be used by God. Um, they might not believe it, but God believes in me. He keeps me breathing. He woke me up for purpose and he woke you up for reason. Glory to God. We thank you now, Father. I pray that you will stir up the gift inside yes. of everyone who hears this prayer. Every, inside of everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, glory to Yeshua on my side. In the name of Jesus, that you would do it for them, God. Stir up yes. the Holy Ghost fire. And Father, for those who are under the pressure right now, for those that are being crushed right now, let the oil flow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Begin to let the oil flow to make it look easy. To make it out of the Oshaya. Thank you, Lord. As it could be. To let the oil flow for those of us who are in the fire, that we would not be consumed. To let the oil flow, God. So that let it flow, be, Father. Oh, God, your work can be accomplished. Yeah, so that your work can be done, God, in the name of Jesus. I in thank the you, name Lord, of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Flow, that the prophets will begin to prophesy. The teachers will begin to teach. The evangelists will begin to run with the word of God. Hallelujah. That pastors will continue to shepherd and guide. Oh, God, that apostles will continue to govern and set up and establish in the kingdom, God. That Ooh, the body thank of Christ you, Jesus. will begin to move with power. Mm and demonstration. Let there be demonstration in our homes, demonstration hallelujah in our families, demonstration everywhere. God, I thank you for quickening up your holy Thank God. you, Lord God. In the hallelujah. Jesus, Father, for these few moments that we are praying, I thank you for doing a quick work. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. People. And we say hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. All the praise and all the glory. I thank you, God. Bless Carl, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless yes. him, God. Destroy yokes upon him, God, in the name of Jesus. Upon glory. His wife, God, in the name of Jesus. Upon their family, God. Take them further, God. Begin to use them in their community, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. I thank you. Hallelujah. That mindsets are to be, oh God, that false mindsets, that the mindset that the enemy has planted upon the believer tonight will be destroyed right now. But we are kingdom people doing kingdom yes. work. Yes. We are called, hallelujah, according to your purpose, Lord, according to your will, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that it won't even take long. And if you receive this, glory to God, and you receive the oil of the anointing in your life, and you receive the holy anointing that God has, then glorify God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Praise. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray and we say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, my God. Me to share this moment on your yes. good live TV. Thank you so much. I pray that God will continue to bless you. Thank you, sister. That God will enlarge himself in wow. you. Yes. In you and through you. And if he does that, you know it's going to be for you. Oh, God. Yes. Hallelujah. I pray uh, that you will walk in the purpose and the anointing that God called you for Yes. I pray that you will continue to be used to expand the kingdom. Hallelujah. In the way he has called you to do it. Thank Don't take you. down and do not hold back. There wow. is greater purpose for you. And God has given you purpose power to do it. I love you. I love you too, my sister. And Pastor. I love you all. <laughs> we love all of you. Well, thank y'all so much. Thank you for hanging in there. I'm telling you, that was a powerful prayer. Thank you all so much. Enjoy your Easter, your family. Have a great week. Remember, you've been activated for purpose. Absolutely. I'm here to tell you, just because you don't see it doesn't mean God is not doing anything behind the scene. Take care. Have a blessed night. We'll see you soon on Good Life TV. Bye now.